Yeah, it is, it's, it's weird because you're playing the same thing, but there is a slightly different connotation. No, I said Wild West, not fuck your cousin Mississippi, he'll be this shit. Sin Nation TV. Hi, and welcome back to yet another episode of The Evolution of Creation. I believe this is episode six. Episode six. Who are you today? Uh, I uh, come from uh, uh, Spain, in Guadalajara. That is Mexico. That is the <laughs> land to be colonized. No, I am from the colonizer's land. All right, and why are you Spanish today? I'm Spanish today because uh, we are going to sit down with Mr. Uh, Joshua Smack. And uh, we're going to talk about his guitars. Uh, his uh, studio is uh, small, but the guitars are many. This is um, basically um, my studio tour of my guitar collection. And it's not a show of see what I've got, because I really don't have that many. But still, you know, the vanity, the ego is uh, it's no, good for it's, the ego. What we're here to talk about today is why do you need several guitars? Yes, that is a question that for someone who does not play the guitar, wonder why you need so many. You know, of course, people go like, oh, you know, if you're a really great player, you could do anything with just one. True. Of course. And here's the reason why we need more than one. Now, this studio we have set up here, my studio is predominantly for songwriting. All right. So my guitars and my setup are not so much for recording. Um, that's what's done more in Simon's studio, where he's got more gear that's geared towards recording. See. Si. In my case, it's more for what are the guitars that inspire me and how do they inspire me to write. That is a, that is a good uh, explanation. Yep. So I'd like to uh, prompt you a little bit. Um, what, maybe let's start talking about the first guitar. Okay. This right here is a Yamaha C60. A Yamaha. It's my very first guitar. It costs something like $100 classical. Nylon string. This is something every Spanish child must have in their home. Yeah, and I've had this since A classical. It's a classical, okay, of course, don't be so stupid. It's a classical guitar, yeah. it is your first one. I can only imagine you get this one first because it was a hundred dollars. Precisely. But, exactly, but what are the benefits, what did you find you learned this being your first guitar? Um, I think I'm Filipino now. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Butangina, I don't know where I'm from. Don't worry, we're going to go to all the colonies today. The thing about um, the classical, as a, compared to say an acoustic, Mm. is um, you've got these nylon strings on your upper strings which make it a lot easier to press when you're new. I see, they hurt less on the fingers. Yeah. Um, the bigger neck does make it harder to play bar chords though. Because I have I played guitar before I've mm -hmm. doodled a bit. I never really noticed the thing, the difference in the nylon strings or in the thicker neck with more girth. I played this for so many years, um, and even after I got electric for the longest time, I didn't have an amp and all that set up. Mm. So I would more often still go to this. And even when I started playing metal, um, most of my earlier cynical annihilation songs were written on this, you know. Very unprofessional. It gets a bit heavy, you know. 
Well, just for context, the cynical annihilation stuff was a very heavy metal. Mm -hmm. But you you wrote those songs on a classical. This guitar, exactly. In fact, um, I'll play you the riff from Take Me Down. See, so before we move on to the next one, I just just curious because when you write a metal song on a classical guitar, yeah. How and you have also wrote other songs, you know, metal and rock on electric. Mm -hmm. How does it differ when you write it on a classical? Um, well, for one thing, the bigger neck changes the way you play, and also um, the action's a fair bit higher than you normally have on the classical, see. meaning the strings hide from the frets. Ah, see, see. So I ended up probably, I have a slightly harder um, pick attack. Mm -hmm. And it's why I use heavier gauge strings on my electrics, which we've got right here, which we'll talk about later on. See, see. So the end result is something almost a bit more aggressive because you have more to work against. I got used to um, playing, it, it's hard to play quick on a classical. Right? See. See one of the benefits too is mm. that your fretting you have to really put more effort in your fretting so when you move over to electric or ac acoustic you know you already have that training okay. acoustic's hard to um to, to fret why don't we, we talk let's move on to the acoustic okay. guitar let's talk about the, this one so this one is an alvarez which alvarez there's another story on how i came to possession of this guitar see we'll talk about <laughs> that another time it's it's not bad Something I noticed already, and uh, the, the change from the nylon strings to the steel is the steel strings. Yes. It's not uh, like a titanium fiber or anything fancy, no? Um, yes. Steel strings. Yes. Steel strings. There's a, a, a much a thinner, a clearer sound. Yeah, it you know, through a bit more. See, the less nylon. Warm, yeah. le less warm, see. It's very yeah. cold, you know, like an ethnic father. No effects. <laughs> <laughs> see. But, I mean, it strums better. More complete sound. Oh, harmonics. Oh. Let's talk a little bit about yeah. the acoustic, you know. And um, let's talk about the jump from the classical to the acoustic. What's different and maybe even going further, what is better? There's no better, the different. See, okay, sorry, sorry, not yeah. better. We are all different. So the there's slightly more string tension on the acoustic mm -hmm. than um, the classical, which gives them a bit more snap. So Plus with the steel strings, you get a more trebly sound. So. Phone onto silence, senor. <laughs> so you have to be professional. This is studio. I, I thought it was. I thought it was. No, I could hear it very loudly. They all could hear it. It's very good microphone. <laughs> but back onto the point. Uh, to rephrase my previous question, what is the acoustic better at doing than the classical? Um, and vice versa. I'll give you an example, right? Blackbird. See, by uh, the Beatles. Yeah. And let's say I played the same thing on the classical. See. I 
can I can hear the difference. There is a, a slightly muddier sound. You know, I think when you're doing a picking, yeah. uh, those steel strings they really have that twang. You know, yeah. you can hear it's and very I, isolated. I don't like it strummed. It's quite muddy. Yeah, muddy waters. Da -na 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 -na, you know. <laughs> but it's nice to. Yeah, but you can also do that with an acoustic, right? But it ends up with a different sound. It's interesting because when I when I try to associate the sounds, mm. to me the uh, classical has more of this uh, Spanish flamenco. This one almost could, could that be your racism? It is not racism. <laughs> It is simply association, okay? There's nothing racist about association. Yeah. Uh, however, this one makes me think a little bit more like a Wild West, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, it is, it's, it's weird because you're playing the same thing, but there is a slightly different connotation. No, I said Wild West, not fuck your cousin Mississippi hillbilly <laughs> shit, okay? <laughs> we'll get to the hillbilly stuff later, I love that stuff. Okay. Um, I think we've covered, I mean, you know, we've got little things that differences like the neck is smaller. Yeah. Um, is the difference between the sound that comes out of the hole? Because both of these guitars, they have a hole. Yeah, so the reason why you have a hole is that it amplifies the sound, so you can play it without plugging into an amplifier. See, si, see, si, but is there a difference between the sound that comes out of the hole? Well, the difference comes down to the construction of the body, the neck, and the strings on them. So it's less about the acoustic classical and more about the specific make. Well, acoustics and classicals are made differently, yes. Okay, so you can elaborate, you don't have to elaborate on that, but <laughs> if not, we can move on. But um, I think, yeah, the acoustics are really nice, um, you know, finger style. I'm a big fan of finger style playing. Gross. When you talk about finger style, you're talking about the fretting or the plucking? Um, it's mainly the picking, you know, things Or the picking. That was terrible. I'll do it again. See, first, because it's, it's got more clarity. It doesn't have that each note is very... Um, Isolated from each other, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's got like bang, 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 and bang, it doesn't bang. have um, you know your electrics It doesn't have much sustain so mm -hmm. there's a more snap to the notes See see so I mean now I think that's a good segue as well because mm -hmm. when it comes to classical and acoustic There is a lot less room for a, a fucking up. Yes, I just did yeah See you know you could hear it very clearly, <laughs> but now we move on to the electric guitars Yeah, and we're going to see the difference and obviously it's a big difference So we're going to have to readjust the entire setup so we're going to take a quick pause and then... See... <laughs> oh, don't hit the mic, put up and there, oh. That was really pillow again, put on in a... And we're back. Now we have done the complete uh, switch over from the acoustic, the analog, over to the digital electric guitar. And you know, I think that is also a fitting move to go over to my other accent. Because I tell you one thing, the Filipinos, they fucking love classic rock, they love electric guitar. So, tell us a little bit about this uh, baby, this Ibanez. This is a Ibanez RGJ Custom 7 string. I actually bought it from Sination guitarist, Mr. Simon Lai. Mm. And I'm taking good care of it. It's um, probably one of the... I've had many guitars over the years, a um, few other ones that I've sold away. So this was when I decided to get back into music, this is the guitar I bought. See, it's beautiful. It's got a very thick uh, girth. I've, I've lost my Filipino. It's very, very thick girth of the neck. Um, well, it's actually got a very flat neck. Ah. Um, that's something that Ibanez are known for. You know, it's a really flat, fast neck as they call it. Flat, fast neck. Yeah, but it's kind of wider to accommodate a seven string, but still pretty comfortable. Uh, guitar 
you first got so you had your um your classical mm -hmm. your acoustic mm -hmm. and now you've got and then you had this ibanez there was other things along the way but for the sake of um what we have in the studio now chronologically this would be the next so this one was the next one yeah okay so now i see you have a very you have seven strings yes can you tell me a little bit about them um, what the seven strings do well i'll tell you one thing i don't actually the seven string is an extra low b string yeah so it extends your range i don't use this that often um with the low b i tend to use it more for the trim so i'll do stuff like So what that kind of so using you know what you just played um, uh, fuck don't worry about my accent is going everywhere <laughs> what you just played them um, how do you use that uh, how do you use this Ibanez guitar to um, what kind of stuff do you write um, you I can use the low B to just add that extra thing going on that extra bass mm. so let's say something like. Soundscapes. Yeah, it's a really low. And it's almost like having a bass system, you know, attached or clipped onto the guitar without having to have an actual bass being played. Anyway, but you know, I guess what most people use seven strings for. <laughs> To get a really deep, dark, uh, murky sound. Well, it's really satisfying because that low B gives you. Wow, that is. I could feel it in my uh, cajones. <laughs> It's, it's a beautiful kind of crushingly heavy sound. See, yeah, it's very... Could you give me just them, um, just to kind of like bridge the gap? Mm. Uh, what are some bands that uh, kind of use that kind of, you know, sound that this guitar can be used to make? I'll say, um, you know, Steve I was... In my book, he was the first one to really use it in that rock setting. Mm. And then, but who really brought it to the mainstream would be Korn. Oh, Korn. Yeah, Korn oh. really um, took the seven string and brought it to the mainstream. And then after that, you've got... Limp Bizkit, you know, food. Corn with the K, not as in corned beef that come in the can. Yeah. And Limp Bizkit, not like the biscuit that come with the Popeyes. Yeah, I mean, they had a lot of really rhythmic, you know, with this kind of hip-hop back and forth. <laughs> almost used in that like percussive quality yeah very much so and even with their bass sounds and the drums mm. interesting is there anything else um, i mean like let's talk a little bit about that uh, what you call the, the trem the whammy bar and mm -hmm. um, how are some ways you can use it because it's very different when you show me the very heavy stuff <laughs> actually very good with it but i can see the steve i influence there i i wouldn't go this i wouldn't say that. i mean just just a bit of the sound you know not that sound the words i would use to describe it is like dystopian noir you know i think of it through a filmic lens yeah. it's kind of like a like a film noir but then it's set in the future 
you know, in this I, I like a Blade it. Runner kind of world. Yeah, I mean, I really love this kind of sound, like. great for a lot of the film stuff that we do as well yes yeah, see I, I do that's what I mean like I immediately have a cinematic sensation when I hear right. this one I mean I'd like to use it especially for filmic stuff just yeah it's almost like a you know yeah I think mystery you know some kind of detective TV show or even if you know we turn on a bit of delay and you could do something like that feels like the part where the detective have the revelation you know that mm. he is the serial killer that's what uh i mean i don't i'm not a great um guitar player no. in that kind of <laughs> go fuck yourself you, you take it. It's very unprofessional. But no, I mean, uh, I used to love, you know, all the shreddy stuff, mm. which I still do. I mean, I, I'm kind of rusty at it. Would you say that this guitar is your best one to do, like, the shreddy shit? Because we've seen he's good at doing that kind of heavy rhythmic stuff. He's good at doing these sort of like uh, ambient soundscapes. Mm -hmm. um, what about like shreddy shit? Do you, is this your best one? Ah, uh, it's pretty good. Like... It's good for, you know, anything more speedy. But, but you can't because it's the electric and it's all kind of you know and with your uh, Friedman B E O D yes you know everything's kind of like blah, 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 like come into one big uh, uh, concoction mm -hmm. one big adobo stew <laughs> yeah I mean look it's great for all this kind of thing but like I like because it's got the humbuckers what is a humbucker well these pickups you know these humbuckers these are Demasios okay. I was going to tell you to pack off when you call me names like humbucker you go back yourself. <laughs> It's great for certain things, like, okay, I'll show you something. That is very good, the uh, Discord and the uh, ambient soundtrack. Oh, hold on, hold on. We need to uh, switch over to the, uh, this is the POV cam, because we are very professional. It's just the way I've set the studio up, I can't get the pedals out here. Okay, let's see POV cam. You know, kind of really atmospheric sounds mm. um, by using a volume swell, things like earthquake or afterneath, and a bit of gain. See, yeah, see. Yeah. So this this uh, guitar is uh, quite a uh, um, diverse. Can do many different things. Yes, I think like it's got a great clean sound, and that's something that I put on a high priority. Every guitar mm. I get, it has to have a great clean sound. So if it sounds like this. that the uh, uh, dystopian noir yeah you love dystopian noir don't you? oh dystopian noir is my favorite my favorite there's something so entrancing about it i think 100 percent we must uh, uh, use that tone for something 
Okay. Okay. You know that's very good to cover that your first and you know in this case the first electric guitar of the selection mm -hmm. it covers so many grounds which like you said is very important when you're building up the collection as well because you don't want to spend how many hundred thousand dollars on something that can only do one thing. Putangina, that's a waste of money. Exactly. This is a 2016 Gibson Les Paul Studio. The Yamaha BB434 Nash. T63 Tele. This is the T68 Nash. It's um, basically a replica of the old Fender Paisley Telecasters. So anyway, we're really happy that you guys stuck around for this two-parter. Yes. Um, hopefully it makes sense to you. We had a great time shooting it, even though he fucked up. You know, technology fucked up, let's not point the fingers. But if you'd like to check out some um, other stuff that I do in terms of music, we do have a brand new film out on the Shima Show media channel. We'll put the links over here. Do check it out, it's called Night Gaunts. It features guitars, bass, um, a lot of synth and um, orchestral scoring stuff. Yeah, we really made full use of all the stuff we've got. Yeah, it's pretty much everything you've seen us talk about up to this episode all in one project, so that'll be interesting and we'll probably do a breakdown video of um, some yeah. of the scoring for that we'll, too. We'll do one in, in one of the follow-up videos. We're gonna talk about both the um, composition with instruments and we're gonna talk about the compositions with the program, the BBC Orchestra and, and your Spitfire Fire Labs. Labs. So if you would love to support us to keep doing what we do, please buy a t-shirt. You can either this get one of these. Get one of these, Holmes. Yep. It's good, you know, you can start working out for the summer and even if you don't, you let your gut hang out and you're, you're proud. Messages on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. And hey, it goes with the guitar. Yeah. So Damn right. Look at that. That's gorgeous. You can message us to get these ones or if you would like some other designs, check out our Teespring store over here. And we've got everything. For people, for dogs, for babies. Yeah. For subhumans. <laughs> like him. Hey, fuck you. Uh, and then we also have, uh, don't forget that this guy does music first and foremost. So yes. don't forget to check out that uh, link up uh, over there. Our music's available up there. Oh! Alright, so anyway, thanks for watching again. Until next time. See ya!